And last different character we're going to do is the Victorian lady. So what I do is I go back to the cardinal, I drop his dynamesh deck back down to like 128 res and just soften everything. So I'm going to start, and this is kind of like starting with a neutral base mesh. It's just, it's vaguely human. You can kind of see where the ears go, where the face and the eyes go, and then I kind of round out the forehead, soften the cheekbones and the jawline, and oh, almost immediately it starts looking more feminine just by doing that very, very little. And now it's just a matter of blocking in the features again, which again, you know, I would start with a female base mesh. And, you know, I can always go back to one of my quick saves or one of my incremental saves and be like, okay, once I get it to a certain point, this can be my base base female model. And if you want to get more into this is my base female body type model or ethnicity model, you can certainly do that as you start collecting sculptures you've done. You can start with even more specific types. Cartoony, anime, female model that you can start with, you know, that kind of thing. Save you time. Always look to, I mean, not always, I guess, if you're one of the people that's like, well, you know, I like going from point A to point B or smelling the roses, you know, you can certainly sculpt everything from scratch. But, And it's good practice to do that for sure. But in a production setting and when you're concepting things, it's more about, hey, you know, start, start something, get your idea. It's getting your idea out quicker than it is going through the anatomy creation process for better or for worse. I mean, if you want to get better at anatomy, sculpt a lot of anatomy. Um, if you want to be fast, uh, start with something you've already done. You know, you see, you got to kind of play play between those two. Don't never, <laughs> is a double negative, don't, don't not sculpt anatomy if you want to be good at it because you're not ever going to be good at it if you don't do it a lot. At least I wouldn't be. Some people can do it once and they're amazing, but for me, I have to do something a lot before I get even close to being even a little proficient. And believe me, um, if I've ever done anything that looked easy or it looked like I was good at it, it's because you didn't see me mess it up a thousand times in a row or practice it a million times before doing it and going like, oh yeah, you simply do this. Well, behind the scenes is a little, little uglier than that. That's true of anything I do. A lot of practice. And you'll you'll know things like when I do demos or presentations on stuff that I'm not I haven't done a lot of practice, you probably tell a little bit of a difference. You know, some things I'm gonna be very comfortable in and basics of ZBrush I'm pretty comfortable, so I could kinda wing that. I did most of this video recording for part one and uh that it seemed like maybe a day afternoon um, but when we get into other types of programs or other stuff within ZBrush it could take me a little bit longer just because I'm not so comfortable it might take me a few tries or programs I haven't been using for years and years and years maybe I've only been using it for a couple months like fusion you'll you know I did a fusion quick start guide and I have been using it a month off and on two months off and on maybe um, so I'm not exactly super CAD modeler, problem solver guy, but at least I know enough of the basics to kind of do a quick start guide. But And just like the Cardinal and the Dock Worker, doing a hair on the separate sub tool, masking it out, making it into polygroup control W, delete hidden, close holes, just dynamesh it out, close your holes for you. Uh, a little bit of an inflate brush. And are there cleaner ways to do that? Absolutely. And again, in part two, we'll get into a lot more of different ways to break things off and make things. Um, but for our, our purposes here and stuff you've learned up to this point, that's good enough for me. If I'm just kind of making a char quick character and feeling it out. There's a little bit of snake hook for her sideburns there. And here's where I start. I take her from the base model and start giving her a little bit more personality and start feeling out what kind of female do I want to make. Then I go ahead and I, I soften her face a little bit. Um, I soften her body a little bit, um, and, and again, this is just to contrast the gaunt dock worker and the stern, um, the stern cardinal. This is like, well, here's here's the polar opposite of that. Is here's a a soft female form, smooth shapes and curves, and 
again, just doing a contrasty character as opposed to doing another old man, you know. And again, and again we, once we get more project-based, or maybe when I get to the end of part two or part three of the intro courses, um, we'll get more into, like, if I wanted to do a super cartoony female with really soft features, you know, or a cartoony old man where his, he's wrinkly but in a more cartoony way. Those are kind of different things. And she's Victorian. I put her hair in a bun. I'm kind of messing around with her hair a little bit. A little more costume stuff. Just kind of adding some stuff to kind of... Because the other guy has got clothing and stuff. And her clothing's fairly simple. At least at this point it is. So I figured, okay, she's going to be fancier. So she's going to have maybe something in her hair. And maybe a little necklace. And with this thing, I started like, okay, I'm going to sculpt a, a thread necklace. And it worked, but it was... Uh, a little too lo-fi. So what I did was go back in with a curve brush and just draw on a necklace. Which I, I don't remember if we get... I don't. We didn't get into curve brush, but that'll be a part two thing where we get into the insert mesh brushes and the curve brushes and make your own custom curve brushes and try curve brushes. So many cool things we get to do next. And that stuff's already been recorded. I just need to sit down and put it all together and edit it and do some marketing stuff so that you guys will you guys will click on it and look at it when I when I release it. And again, here's her clothing, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of her body here. There we go. Dynamesh. There, perfect. Let's hold it back in. And again, because these aren't two separate pieces, it's kind of hard to get that line delineating between her breasts there, so I mean, maybe I should have kept those separate shapes first and then Dynamesh at a higher resolution. But, you know, take a Damien standard brush and put a crease right there, and it's good enough. Again, it's just indicating. You know you know what those are, so it's not like I need to spend a lot of time making those exactly right. And I don't even know what this is. I could have done a very one-off specific type jewelry thing, but decided it wasn't worth the time just to indicate that she has a necklace at this point. And then I just take her hair pee, her hair flower, and I kind of modify it a little bit, shrink it down. And this is where I do skip ahead into kind of a part two thing where we make this a custom insert mesh brush just really quickly. Hit B, uh, hit create insert mesh brush, and then you can just drag those on. And we get much more into that in part two. So sorry, I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit. Make the depth a little bit lower in the brush options, brush depth. Kind of push them in a little bit more, break those off into their own subtool. And then I realized her face is actually kind of really low res compared to the other guys. Now, with a female face, especially younger, softer female face, I, I can't rely on just carving it up with a bunch of wrinkles and lines and stuff like that. It's more about indications of form changes and smooth transitions between, you know, the curvilinear straight lines on her nose that curve out to her cheekbones and her and her kind of how it bunches up around the corners of her lips and how her lips look and are sculpted and how female female faces younger female faces look compared to an old dock worker weathered old man face <laughs> and again it's just a reference go grab some reference of the face you're going for and use that and if you want to, and also um, another really good reference point is traditional sculptors and other 3D artists where they've already done it and they'll do a render of like a clay render. And you can kind of see the forms a little bit better than if you go out and grab a photograph of somebody and it's got lighting on it, materials and shadows, and that can kind of throw you all off, a, off a little bit if you're trying to just look for form. So it was scan data too. So uh, 1024.com, go grab a scan model or look at their reference and you can see scanned people and you can see the forms as opposed to being distracted by textures on them and skin skin color and skin texture you can actually just see the scan data and make much more informed decisions on how your forms look before you start adding a bunch of color detail and stuff like that and again we're not doing sculptural hair we're just kind of doing some quick indications detailing it up a little bit with standard brush clay build up but nothing fancy. Indications and concepting. Making sure this is the bust we're looking for. 
before we go into all those final steps and spending the hours and hours polishing this thing up. <laughs> 